let's jump in here because we have some things to talk about before we even get started. So tell you what, you guys take a look here, right? See, see if you pick up on something. I have never seen this in a football manager series. So you check this out. We'll be right back after the intro and you guys can talk about it with me. Let me know in the comments if you spot what has happened. Roll that intro. All right, well, we're back. Hope you guys like the intro. To, uh, I've, I've done something a little different with the uh, intro here uh, for this season. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But um, yeah, so if you watched last episode, the channel introduction and the, the you know, kind of intro to the save, I had taken the job and they were in the middle of a board takeover. So there was a transfer embargo and I was aware of all that. And I've been in these in these board takeovers from day one before. I have never been fired. They always say, well, you know, you know, you're a brand new coach. We'll give you an opportunity. I've never been fired on a board takeover, ever. I have now. <laughs> so, I mean, I just took the job at the end of May. And we, we've been making a few moves. We've hired some staff. We've signed a few players renegotiated contracts and sold a few players, put a couple of players up for, for, uh, for transfer. And yeah, the transfer, you know, the uh, board takeover went through, they sunk in like $3.7 million. I was like, yes, this is good. And then I got a pink slip. So I replaced previous head coach RC. So what I did is I just went in, went into the ad new coach, edited the current coach that I had and put it in, you know, put it in to take over the team again. So, you know, I just kind of cheated the system, but that's how it goes. I'm kind of pissed off, but because it's the same board and everything now, but I've already made some moves. I've started getting to know the team and I've already done the intro video and the thumbnail and yeah, you know, so I just, you know, put too much time in this morning uh, getting this all set up. Uh, but one thing, if you were with me for last year's uh, lower league save, uh, you remember the issue we had when I did the plus, 50, plus 30? Well, we don't have that problem this year because I remembered, mostly thanks to you guys, to uh, re retire my original manager, my original coach that time traveled 30 years in the future and then was in his 80s. And now I have been reborn as a 32-year-old uh, head coach. So we'll look at my at my background and everything in a little, little while because uh, it's the same manager I had in the Leeds beta save. Uh, so uh, dual citizenship and all that other stuff. And but I I did something a little different with my stats and I did it after listening to that new football manager podcast by the athletic that I pimp sponsorship. Hello. Um, miles or the athletic feel free. Uh, but, uh, no, just, uh, they do have a new podcast. So I've been listening to it. And the other day there was a suggestion that I went that makes a lot of sense. And I said, I'm going to do that. So I did it. All right, well, let's get into looking at the team. Media prediction is 13th. Uh, my new assistant coach is Damian L. Masani, uh, who we did hire. And we have a two-star reputation, which is decent. And a new stadium, as we talked about in the, I think we talked about it in the intro, built in 2038, uh, 22,000-seat capacity. Good training, good youth, and average uh, facilities, average youth recruitment. Not a very old team, founded in 1954. I usually like to play with older clubs, but uh, this is the one that got my attention. And here are who they are telling us are the key players. Muhammad up top, and that is Aziz Muhammad. John Toll on the left wing. 
Faith Selick on the right wing, and I'm sure that little squiggly line means something in the pronunciation. If you haven't figured it out by now, uh, let's see, who is this? This is uh, Yari Stamen in the number 10, which we are not going to play with. Uh, Rowan Peters and Rip Van Winkle. No, Roll Van Bulky, Bokel in the mid. Anas Bunu and Jeffrey Dahan on the fullback slots. Soren Kook and Kook. I had a cock in the lead, so kook now. And Frank Nijman in uh, the center backs. And Hakan Varal in goal. Top goal scorer, Face Selleck. Hot prospect, Hakan Varal in goal. No current loans, no current transfers. Uh, so I'm just getting hired again, so I have not looked at all the stuff to see if there's any changes. So they do want a mid-table finish this year, work within payroll budget. I have a two-year deal, work towards reaching the playoffs. And then in, what's that, four years to reach the playoffs. All right. That seems fine. So I take the hot seat, and it's pretty hot because the last manager only lasted a couple of, about a month and a week, about five weeks. So, all right, these are the moves that we're looking to make. Uh, I do have, I'm going to withdraw that contract offer because I don't know anything about the guy. And I didn't make that, so I don't want him. Now, we have $17 million in the transfer budget and about $140,000 in payroll. I don't know. I'm going to go look at this guy because they've made an offer that's been since I left. Don't know if I want him or not. He has not been scouted. So why don't we scout him, cancel the offer? Yeah, we're going to cancel that, but we are going to scout him. So nobody coming in yet because we had the embargo. I couldn't do anything. Uh, this is a veteran uh, fullback, not one of our club leaders. He's under contract offer with Heracles. I accepted that one. And I had rejected this one. Taking a look at the early transfers, I have moved out a few people. Now, all of these guys came in last year. So these are off of my watch. It was these guys. So the two guys that went out on free, they did depart right after my first iteration took over. But they were already arranged so i sold Raynell Koenor to Denbosch for 75,000 he was uh one of our goalkeepers he did start 38 games last year very solid allowed only 42 with 11 shutouts but i thought we had some better options and he was 30 so we cashed in on him for 75,000 and then we had another goalkeeper that goes to Excelsior for 300,000 and he is an 18 year old Dutch keeper valued at 365 not bad and he could have improved he was five star potential but we had several uh, very quality goalkeepers and so I went ahead and sold him for a pretty tidy sum and uh, Roos goes out on a free. This was a guy that came in, uh, just returned from loan right, right when I was fired, actually uh, after I was fired. So, yeah, because I've been out of work here for about a week waiting for the uh, – no, actually, no, I just got fired yesterday. So that happened uh, on the off time. No other moves coming in yet. We've already discussed this. Club Vision. All right, let's take a look at uh, the tactics. These are the tactics that I had put in, and I guess they did not get deleted. So basically, these are all default uh, pickups. Uh, controlling possession of 424, and then another 424 with more central midfield. This is more of, of a defensive posture, and this is a true defensive with. Uh, Five at the back and uh, still two up top. I, I liked the two up top that we had with leads in the beta. 
So I, I am going to try that. And we've got two uh, two scores that are going to be pretty good. I might consider moving Muhammad. He is really good, 17 finishing, but his pace is off. So I don't know. We'll see if we get an offer for him. Nobody's interested in him, so I'm going to say probably not. So I had originally wanted to, I was looking at uh, Sparta Rotterdam, and I thought, you know, somewhere in the video, bringing in the clip from uh, the movie 300, this is Sparta, would be pretty cool. Um, you can use that if you want it. Uh, but I decided they were already in the Arita Visi and had never fallen out. So I did not want to, I wanted to start a little lower. Uh, I wanted it to be kind of like a journeyman. So why did I come here? Well, let's jump in because remember we're in the year 2050 so i did a plus 30 that's kind of my niche in football manager i like to go 30 years in the future where we have all regens uh, but if we come to the uh the world rankings uh, you can see the netherlands are number two and i have done a little reading since last the intro episode and you have to remember as an American, I'm used to video games that have presented information to me, historical, you know, the Dutch Indies, you know, that the Netherlands owned and, you know, trade. So to me, Dutch was never a bad word or a negative word with negative connotations. And so I certainly do not mean it in any negative way. But in some of the reading, I have seen that Dutch or the European pronunciation of Deutsch uh, comes from the Germans and due to the world wars that there could be some hard feelings there. So I will endeavor to refer to them as the Netherlands as a nation. Uh, but if I do say Dutch, A, it's quicker and easier and I don't mean anything negative by it. So I, I hope you, you, you know, if, if I do that, it, please don't be offended at me because I don't mean anything by it because you know here in america at least we've never seen you know it's always been used and in history books and everything else and honestly i didn't even realize the german connotations until i was reading about it online so i've got five decades unfortunately of hearing the term dutch as referring to the netherlands and um uh, so forgive me if, if, if I go down that road. But they're number two in the world. And I was, you know, I wanted to kind of do not a building the nation type save, but something along those lines with the single team. It will be a single team save if we can manage it uh, without getting fired again. Jeez. Um, but I was kind of looking in here. And if we come back in and go, uh, you know, I, I looked at Africa. The only co country you could play with is South Africa in the base game. Then I looked at Asia and I had incorporated all of the, all of the clubs, but Japan's not in there. Japan was a, a club I wanted to actually do a save in FM20. And I'm sure there's a database out there, but there were some issues with it, the one that I did find. So I stayed away from it. And, you know, I was looking at Thailand, you know, Indonesia. Uh, I want to, who else was on there? Singapore. There were, there are a few countries. Oh, here we go. I got my list here. See, I made a list. Um, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, and Korea were the five countries I had loaded. Wasn't going to play with China. Um, and you know, just honestly, just didn't get my attention. So I started thinking as a fan of the game, I'm a fan of American first, at least internationally. I root for my home, home country. Uh, I don't watch MLS. I don't root for any MLS teams. So, um, you know, this is more international. Uh, my founding into Football as a whole was through Pele, so Brazil has always held a special place in my heart. I consider them my number two country that I root for after America. Uh, then I root for England as my third choice, and 
probably in the last 12, 12 years, maybe 16 years, at least 12, uh, it was the Netherlands that, uh, you know, with Van Persie um, on the squad at the, at the World Cup level and really started cheering for them when they would play. So I was looking through my list of teams and countries that I've never managed in, and I said, you know, I've never managed in the Netherlands. So that seemed to be a good fit. So I went up, went ahead and went into Europe and started looking at the rankings. And again, the Netherlands are very high, but if we look at the coefficient, they drop all the way to 12th. And you can see they had one good year back in 48-49. They won. Uh, they were they were pretty deep in the World Cup, and then they just won the World Cup. Uh, I think this past year. And uh, so, no, that was the year they did win it. So they had a couple of years where they finished pretty high up, and then they did win it one year. And so you can see they're actually going to be going down next year currently, and. Scotland's going to take a big nose dive. They had a really good run recently. But, you know, I was looking, so, I, you know, I didn't want to do another England save. Spain, Germany, France, Italy, you know, they're the big five. So I was looking at Portugal, Belgium. The Ukraine was in the mix. But I gravitate more towards Western Europe and the U.K. And so I said, well, you know, and I saw Netherlands, you know, they're actually really good as a country, but not so great overall because we know there's three big clubs, and that's really it. So I said, well, let's look at the Netherlands. And I went into there, and, I, you know, there's only two leagues you can play. So, again, I was looking at a couple of clubs. There was one club that I really wanted to possibly play with, and that was this Ringsburg's boys. They had never been up in the history of the, they got relegated, I think, here, but they've never they've never really been any higher. So they've had a couple of shots, but always finished last, including this year. So they've been one and dones, but they got relegated this year, and I so they drop into an unplayable league. So I couldn't do it. And I, you know, I didn't want to play, uh, you know, the you know the big clubs. I looked at Excelsior. I didn't want to, you know, I looked at a few clubs. So De Graaf Shop is the one that got my attention because of the facilities, good corporate, good training, good youth, adequate youth recruit, you know, average youth recruitment, and they've got a pretty big stadium. So I said, that gives you a good starting point to try to build from. So that's why I went with these guys. I'm going to go ahead and get through the inductions. I'm trying to hire a head of youth development for loans, and I've got some scouting going on. So we're going to start looking at needs. Let's take a quick look at the team report. You can see we're pretty, you know, we've got we've got a starting 11. Uh, Selleck on the right side, I could use some depth there. We've got Nijman, who would be our starting center back, but is also our starting left back. Honestly, I think he's more, he can't cross, that's the problem. But his heading is a little lacking. So, got to kind of get used to, to the Netherlands here and what an average player looks like. It looks like, to me, that heading is going to be an issue for the most part at this level. So if they cut the mustard, what that's going to mean, I'm going to need a left defender, and we're going to have to look at that pretty hard. If we drop down to two-star, uh, we have Bunu that drops into that spot, and uh, John Toll. Rasur, Martinez, Van Ejma, Van Ejma. So, you know, that's that's kind of what we're looking at here. Muhammad, I think I would like to sell him if we could get anything for him. But I do have Martinez. Selleck's going to be a winger. Van Ejma, he's just not very good. He's from Curacao. 
And if I remember Sid Meier's Pirates, correct me if I'm wrong, but, and that's one of the games that I've played in years past where the, you know, where the Netherlands are referred to as the Dutch. Uh, in, in it's the Dust Dutch West Indies in the Caribbean area of which Curacao is located, I believe, right? Uh, somebody had said they'd like me to turn my phone off or that would, you know, that that kind of throws them off. I will try to move it farther away. I actually have the ringer all the way off now, but the uh, text messages, there's nothing I can do about that short of turning them off. And unfortunately, in my profession, I've got to have my phone on. I'm in, I'm in sales, so phone's got to be on. So I do limit it and it doesn't go off you know, all day long. So bear with me on that, guys. I'll, I'll do the best I can. And I do try to edit it out as much as I can. All right, well, let me get into, I've got to go through all the, the new uh, inductions and everything else. I've set tactics, but let me get through the inductions and, and scouting and uh, start looking at players, and we'll be back and look at some transfers uh, when something happens or when something new crops up here I think you guys need to see. But let me know in the comments about getting fired by a board takeover. That was crazy because that hadn't happened to me before. All right, so that's a quick look at the club, where we're going to be at, um, what's happened here in the early going, and where we may need to make some moves. So let me get into the friendlies and work on some transfers. And we'll take a look at the transfers next episode and also get into our first matches of the season. Don't forget, we are looking at three-day-a-week uploads, Monday, Wednesday, Friday on this save. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I will be doing another save. I'm not sure when I'm going to start it. I need to get this one kind of up and running first. But once I do have this under control, uh, I already have the intro video and the ideas for the other one done. I just need to get into the game. And what I also did, just a tip, because I know last year some of you guys said that you liked the plus 30 idea and would be doing that in your game yourself for your solo game. Two things you can do. One, in the initial setup, there is a way that you can use fictitious players. I don't know, however, if that just changes players' names. So if Ronaldo would still be Ronaldo, just under a different name. And I didn't want that. I wanted all regens, hence the plus 30. Uh, the other thing you can do is when you get to the point where you're ready to start, like I was, save it as your like a base save under a different title. And then you can load that. And then save again, save as, and rename it. And then you have the same save twice under two names. So I have this save now as my Netherlands save and as my starting point. And then I will also have it saved a third time as my journeyman save because it's going to be a journeyman style save with a twist. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not sure how it's going to come off. But, uh, you know, it'll be interesting, if nothing else. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that one a lot. All right, well, hit the like button. More likes, more eyes on the video. That's all I can ask from you guys. And uh, subscribe if you haven't done so. And introduce yourself to me down in the comments, especially if you're new to the channel and you're coming on board with this save. Looking forward to meeting any new people that come on, on board. Take care, guys. Bye.